As the coronavirus crackdown continues and each authoritarian grasp at fundamental liberty furrows my brow a little wrinklier, I'm training my mind to focus on what can be appreciated and learned during this episode, the silver linings in the chaos that'll make tomorrow better than today. Eventually, all indications are the literal tomorrow is going to suck, but at some point that trend will reverse. And one of those points for optimism, or at least one of those hard knocks lessons it's good to learn eventually, is the breakdown in the illusion that the authorities can and will always protect you and keep you safe. One of the major catalysts in changing my personal opinion on guns, from common sense gun control to make America full auto again, is the uncomfortable realization that you are your own first and last line of defense. Ideally, in normal day-to-day -day life, there is a world of emergency responders who can help you in between those points. Police, firefighters, medics, etc. But no matter how many of them there are, no matter how close by they are, no matter how fast they are, the first person to identify a threat against you is you. And if things develop to a worst case scenario, the last person who can defend you is you. And that is especially true in times of heightened panic and strained public resources. It's being demonstrated in real time. Across the country, police departments and other emergency responders are outright announcing they will not be making arrests or in some cases even responding to calls about certain low-level or non-emergency or non-violent crimes. And actually, I don't even blame police departments for trying to manage their resources smartly. We probably don't need to waste time on certain petty offenses. We probably don't need to overcrowd jails at a time of highly contagious illness outbreak, but but I can't understand the thinking in advertising these decisions publicly. Prioritize and strategize behind the scenes, sure, but telling the public that it's open season for certain crimes, including theft and burglary, is exactly how you get more of those crimes. Especially if you take steps that make it more difficult for citizens to defend against those crimes themselves. Several mayors in Illinois, Louisiana, California, and elsewhere have activated emergency orders to give themselves the authority to outright ban the sale of firearms if they decide to do so. And what you get with that recipe is exactly this sort of scene at a San Francisco Walgreens. Looters casually filling their bags as though they're shopping and then just heading out the door because this isn't a police priority and the shop owner and the patrons can't defend themselves. And as the entire state of California locks down, who knows where that police priority is going to fall? LA Mayor Eric Garcetti says he's going to deputize city personnel to drive around and enforce your quarantine and your business closure. But we're certainly going to deputize many city employees to walk those streets, to drive around. If we see any folks that are still open, we'll just pay them a visit and let them know that this is something that they have to comply with and it's for their own health. In the very rare cases where somebody doesn't comply, of course, we can't enforce that. We're potentially entering a situation where so-called non-essential businesses are aggressively policed to close, while essential ones are looted without intervention. A bizarre backwards world where police aren't defending your rights because they're too busy violating someone else's. Now, I don't want to overstate. We'll have to see how this plays out. The truth is, the whole thing is uncertain, and as a practical matter, totally unenforceable. The state doesn't have the resources to detain 40 million people for the crime of simply going about their lives. There's only one consistent truth in that sort of unprecedented chaos. You are your own first and last line of defense. People are quickly realizing that truth in California specifically and across the country more broadly. A spike in gun sales, 300%. Over this time last year, coupled with workforce risk management for the feds, has created massive strain on the FBI's National Instant Criminal Background Check System, the system through which you must pass if you want to buy a gun through any gun retailer across the country. Right now, we're only dealing with system delays, some of which can be days long, but enjoy that while it lasts. There are warnings that offices could shut down and sales could halt altogether. All of that is the context for some very rare stories that bring a smirk to my face this week. This out of the San Francisco Chronicle, gun sales surge amid coronavirus fears and lockdown. The same story is true down south. 
Coronavirus has inspired a run on guns in Los Angeles. You can see the line at this shop in Culver City. Inside, it is body to body, social distancing be damned. Common Sense said that California didn't need the guns. This sort of mythology of the, 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 the gun, a guy with a gun that's going to come save the day. I mean, it's right. Sort of right out of the movies. The reality is it's most likely to create more harm, more damage, uh, more lost lives uh, in those circumstances. They didn't need the guns until they did. And I'm glad to see any Americans, but Californians specifically, taking their safety into their own hands. But I do reserve the right to laugh at the contradictions with their politics while they do it. And that is what's happening. It's easy to think, oh, it's just those redneck gun nuts of California beefing up their already ridiculous arsenals. No, in Sonoma County, one shop owner interviewed says 90% of his recent customers are new gun owners. First time gun buyers who, at least anecdotally, struggle to reconcile the predominant political views within their state and their own personal political views with the inescapable reality that the state cannot guarantee your protection in an emergency. One LA customer who spoke with a reporter is a self-described Joe Biden supporter who blames Trump for the chaos in the store. If Trump hadn't downplayed the virus, there wouldn't be this anxiety, he says. Well, I just hope he picked a Joe Biden approved weapon. You don't need 30 rounds to protect yourself. Buy a shotgun. Buy a shotgun. And that guy was with his platinum blonde trophy wife who says she hates guns, but she's afraid of what could happen to her home alone with her children. Another LA customer was in the same store with his millennial son who tried to convince dad to get a gun that shoots non-lethal rubber bullets instead. Uh. Yeah, we're not doing that, Dad said. Many customers were, of course, wearing masks dual purpose to prevent viral spread and to conceal your identity. A young screenwriter speaking with a reporter asked, you're not gonna describe what I look like, are you? I told my wife not to even mention to my friends that I'm doing this. He was seated beside a music producer who would not give his name, but admitted his mask was more for concealing his identity than for disease prevention. Owning a gun, he said, is not really my brand. The other irony here is that despite that newfound urgency, Californians now have to lie in the bed that they've made. After you've endured the crowds and the shop shortages and trying to conceal your identity to preserve your social and professional life, after you've finally made it through that background check backlog too, you still gotta get through at least 10 days of defenseless quarantine. That's because state law requires a 10 day waiting period for you to pick up your gun after your purchase is finalized. So twiddle your thumbs and practice your finger aim because that's the extent of your self-defense capabilities for the first wave of this chaos. And if that feels nonsensical, just remember this was sold to you as yesterday's common sense. And Californians are quickly realizing, no, there aren't in fact easy loopholes to use to skirt the law. No, there is no gun show loophole for you. And no, there is no online loophole like your Senate says that makes a gun just a click away. I mentioned this story in the last video, but I want to return to it in more detail. No, California, you can't just find some online or out-of-state seller to ship you a gun. According to this testimony from Omaha Outdoors, a large online gun retailer based in Texas, Californians are calling frequently to ask for a gun shipped straight to their doors, but it doesn't work that way. They have to ship it to a federally licensed dealer in your state who will have to pass you through that backlogged background check system and apply all applicable California laws in the process, including that 10 day waiting period. It is unfortunate to have to learn the truth behind media and politician lies the hard way. In real time, in an urgent scenario where you've suddenly realized that your own safety and your own defense are up to you and you alone. But it's better to learn that lesson late than never or in a scenario that's even more dire. I personally am looking at this coronavirus situation as a dress rehearsal for a real apocalypse. Yeah, if you live in an urban center, you may end up at increased risk for criminal victimization. We'll see how this plays out. But you can still go to the grocery store. You can still get your food. You can still get your medication. Now imagine this scenario where that isn't true, where you can't go to the grocery store because there is no food or medicine production, where it really is every person for himself 
and there are only so many resources to go around. Suddenly, it doesn't look so crazy to be equipped and proficient in self-defense. Suddenly, that mythology of a guy with a gun, as Gavin Newsom put it, isn't mythology at all. It's reality and a ruthlessly quick reality that can strike at any time. Last week at this time, nobody's events were canceled, everything was still open, it was business and society as usual, and all it took was one week's time to break the real mythology, the mythology that the state can always protect you and keep you safe. At least this time, the circumstances are manageable enough to give us an opportunity to learn this lesson, and we'd all be wise to do so. The next time a week like this one strikes, it may not be so kind. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter that is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.